24-7-365. Aviation never stops, but neither does the weather. Your National Weather Service issues forecasts around the clock to help aviation stay ahead of changing weather. But what exactly goes into those forecasts, and how do we do it? Let's take a look. So some of the challenges of forecast, aviation forecasting in our area, it's really twofold, is the, the fact that we get very, we get complex weather here. Um, you're talking about complex large storms, uh, such as coastal storms, where you can get rain, wind, snow, and especially in the winter time and fall. And then also in the summer and spring, we get uh, more, we can get thunderstorms, but we can also get little mesoscale events, smaller scale events, such as uh, sea breezes, uh, which, which create wind shifts and also stratus and fog. Um, that's one part of it, the complex weather. The other thing is that we're in a very, for aviation forecasting, we're in a very uh, high demand airspace. Uh, we have three, three major airports here, Newark, uh, LaGuardia, and JFK, where a lot of the traffic, air traffic that goes uh, from abroad or is going to go further west uh, or into the country uh, does, does fly through here. So any kind of uh, changes in the weather, especially just, just small changes in the wind, it could be a 20 degree wind shift, just a few hundred feet in ceiling height, which is your, your cloud deck, or just a few miles in visibility can cause major, major problems in terms of uh, flight delays, having to change runways, um, or even cancellations. So with such importance placed on aviation forecasts from the National Weather Service, how exactly do we make them? Let's check back with Nelson for more on that. All right, so the main, um, the main forecast product that we use to communicate our aviation forecast is the Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. And that's, um, that's a detailed forecast where we, we're going to show our, our users wh where are the significant changes in terms of uh, wind speed, uh, cloud height, visibility, um, weather conditions, obstructions to visibility, and also uh, wind shear. You know, what, over a 24 to 30 hour period, when are there going to be significant changes in critical levels to them? Um, and and try to and put that in a form that they can they can use that information to make their make their decisions. So you know, it's, it's a little, in terms of, uh, it's a little more detailed than what we normally do in, in a seven day forecast or uh, that, we, that you might see uh, on your local TV station. Uh, but this is the type of information that our aviation users are looking for. And you know, it really always comes, it starts with looking at the big, the big picture. Uh, you want to see what's going on with, with any forecast, what's, what's going on in the observations, and really what's going on higher up in the atmosphere. We look at the jet stream, we look at, um, hey, this is an example of a water vapor uh, picture here, but we look at, look for jet streams, we look for little swirls in the atmosphere, uh, which, which are your main weather producers. And then we kind of, we, then we focus down to the smaller scale. Uh, what we're looking for could be fronts that are going to affect the area and what kind of weather is that going to create for our region. Um, uh, and also, uh, you know, you, we can look at different types of analysis, um, such as observations, to give us an idea, uh, you know, what, what, what is going on in our local area. We can use ra uh, radar imagery. Uh, we can look at both velocity and um, uh, reflectivity to give us an idea of, you know, where, where, are there sh where are there showers developing and how, or thunderstorms, and how, how intense are they? Where, what direction are they moving? We can also see wind flow in, in our, um, through these uh, uh, radar products where we can actually you know, get an idea of is there a sea breeze developing? Is it going to come on to onshore? Is it going to affect a certain airport? So these are some of the things we, we do look at. Satellite imagery is very important. Uh, and that we can see is, is there a stratus deck offshore that's going to that's gonna move onto the, uh, you know, on, on land and affect one of these airports? Uh, you know, and it, how, how can we convey that information to our users so they can, they can best plan? So the, there's a there's a wide uh, variety of uh, information that we can look at between radar data, satellite uh, model data, and really integrating all this uh, to come out with the the best forecasts uh, for our users.